color profiling. Color profiling is a very advanced topic, but I want to cover it now, and you can always go back to it and refer to it. Um, color profiling is just the fact that there are pictures out there that you take with digital cameras, and when you take a picture with a digital camera, it assigns it a color range, okay? And that color range is usually like RGB or sRGB, depending upon what camera you have. And it's usually an RGB because there's no camera that shoots CMYK, thank God, um, for that too. Uh, because, yeah, it's, it's pretty limited that way. Let's go into user shared, and I have a picture in here. And I think it's 56, I believe. Okay, so when I open this up, and this is a raw image, it's called, and this is what happens when you shoot uh, raw out of your camera. But down below it, you notice that the camera assigned it an RGB, okay, right here below. So now it's in RGB. That means uh, when I take it to get it printed, uh, depending upon whatever profiling unit that the printer uses let's say I, I use a kiosk at uh, Walmart okay that kiosk might understand RGB or sRGB or both okay but those are things that aren't very told to very many people so the if I go to open image Being that it's RGB, it has a pretty good gambit of color. And another thing, remember, gambit means a very wide variety of color, a very large spectrum of color. So this is very large here, okay, between the values of red to black or blue to red, there's a large gambit. And when RGB and sRGB, the differences are, sRGB just has a slight more variation of color within their gambit so they have you know maybe a, a even brighter red out there or uh, in this tone they have a, a muted red that's not appearing in this one so is it so powerful that we're gonna see the change not really let's um let's go in here and say image edit assign profile and let's assign this a profile of sRGB okay and you see a slight change there so it, it's not so slight that it might pick it up via print but you never know so here is a DIN the Adobe RGB where you have a very bright white and if you're shooting with sRGB you get this now Notice that this change made it very bright, very washed out. And yet I even said that sRGB has a larger variety of colors in the gambit. Well, you would have to take advantage of shooting the picture in sRGB in order to take advantage of that. You just can't say, be sRGB, okay? And the reason for that is because if you do that, just like you've seen here, all your vivid reds become washed out. So you have to set your camera to sRGB in order to shoot it uh, and get the full range of the gambit. And then you're looking at other things like, you know, there's so many in here that's just ridiculous, okay? And when, when you start looking at these, these are very specialty things where if you're putting it on, let's say, a television or let's say you're printing it on certain kinds of paper or you're using a certain kind of printer, that's what these are for. Should you dip into these values? Only if you really know what you're doing or you're gonna kinda, let's say I switch it over to Epson sRGB, okay? Uh, low change. And now if I decide to take this to a kiosk um, and get it printed, it's going to have the 
Epson RGB in there and it might get messed up quite a bit because let's say the kiosk doesn't know what S Epson sRGB is. So you should always stick with the basics as far as the profiling goes. And why I'm talking about this right now as an advanced course, because in here you notice that I have my color profile here, okay, in the, the new document window. So I, I want to cover this right here, even though it's an advanced talk topic. Now the topic being that way, let's say I don't want Photoshop to ever change out colors. There is this thing in here that you can do under color settings. If you say, I do not want to do any color changing, I can say profile, ask when opening, ask when pasting, and ask when opening. So what will happen here is now, if I'm in a different profile, let's say I'm in my color settings and somehow magically this got changed. Okay, That means every document that I open in Photoshop from now on, if I didn't have these checked, it, Photoshop would automatically change it on me. And that's bad. That's really bad. So what happens is, let me open up the same document. And let me switch it out to a color um, setting that uh, is outside the box because I know it's RGB. Let's go to Photo Pro, which is another very large gambit. Let's open this up. And that was 1856 again. This time I'll concentrate on 1857. Okay, you notice it's Adobe RGB. I can open the image. But now it says stop. You're about to change this color profile. Do you really want to do that? No, I want to use the embedded profile instead of the working space. Okay. I can convert it or I can discard the embedded profile. Don't manage color. In this case, I want to keep it Adobe uh, RGB 1998 because that's what the camera shot it in and I don't want to change it up to Photo Pro. There we go. So that is color profiling. If you're new to Photoshop, that's going to be a very advanced topic. If you're a senior citizen in Photoshop, that's a very handy trick, okay? So please refer back to this video once you get a higher understanding of uh, color profiling and when you start getting prints done, okay? All right, please move on to the next video.